Hey everybody, welcome to this video on getting started in QGIS. First of all, I want to say a huge shout out to all the engineers, developers, and everyone else who built QGIS. I had nothing to do with it, but I did donate $100 to QGIS, and I really encourage you to do the same. This is such an amazing pro product, and it's so cool that it's open source. So in this video, we're going to do five things. I'm going to show you how to open and save a project in QGIS, how to set a coordinate system in your QGIS project, how to add data and stream a base map. We'll do a little orientation to moving around in the workspace, and then I'll show you how to set up a favorite directory. So let's get right into it here. I'm on a Windows, so I open up QGIS from the, the start menu, type in QGIS. I always open the version with grass. I find that opens up the, the most full suite of functionality. Notice I have upgraded to QGIS 3.10. Uh, new versions of QGIS are constantly coming out, so you may want to check that you're using an updated version. Okay, so it's opened a clean workspace for me, and the very first thing we're gonna do is actually set the coordinate system of this project. And a coordinate system is We'll talk more about this later, but it's uh, basically a reference frame for how we define position anywhere on the, the Earth's surface. And in QGIS, it's very helpful if you keep all of your data in the same coordinate system in projection, although that's not always possible. But it's usually a good idea to start out by assigning a coordinate system, and we do that by this button down here. And in this class, we're going to work mostly in WGS84, um, and we're not going to use a projection, just a coordinate system to start out. Okay, so we'll apply that. We'll hit OK. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, add a uh, data set. So to add data, we're going to come over here uh, to the Data Source Manager. Notice I can add lots of different types of data. In this class, we'll be using mostly vector and raster data. So here I'm going to add a vector. And what I'm going to look for is the Vermont Cities layer. Again, because it's a vector shapefile, we have six or seven different uh, auxiliary and metadata files. I usually click on the one with the .shp extension, although I'm not actually sure it matters. Uh, so we'll hit that one, click Add and close. So these dots here are now cities in Vermont. We'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, so next thing I want to do though is actually show you how to load a streaming base map. We will be using a lot of our own imagery in this class, but it's really cool that modern GIS platforms let you load in streaming maps, similar to what you might see on Google Earth or Bing. Now to do that, uh, there's a couple ways you can do it. We're going to use uh, something called Quick Map Services. So that's up here under the web menu, Quick Map Services. Uh, if that is not showing up for you, it's possible you need to add the plugin. And this is something you should know about QGIS anyway. There's a lot of different plugins which you can add under the plugins menu. And so um, what we can look at here is the plugins that we currently have installed including quick map services, and then a whole bunch not installed. And so if, if quick map services is not installed for you, you can just search it in here. And, uh, and then make sure it's turned on, and then hit close. Uh, another thing about quick map services, it defaults to a pretty limited set of services. So um, the way to get more is to go to it, go down to settings, and choose the uh, More Services tab here and click on Get Contributed Pack. And that will download a lot of other streaming map options and give you a nice long list to choose from. So you need to click that Get Contributed Pack. So once you've done that, you should be able to go up here to Quick Map Services, see a huge list of possible uh, base maps. I'm going to just go ahead and choose trusty old Google Satellite right here. Click that, and 
Uh, it may take a minute to load if you're on a slow internet connection, but boom, there it is. Here's the Adirondacks, here's Lake Champlain, and the Green Mountains of Vermont. Good, so you've learned how to add data, uh, stream a base map. Let's talk a little bit about moving around in the video, in the, in the uh, QGIS. So I'm not going to go into detail about this because you can just explore this on your own, but the things I find handy are um, the hand here, which lets you just click and hold and move the screen. Um, and then, of course, the magnifying glass, which lets you click and hold and draw a box to zoom in. Or likewise, you can use the negative magnifying glass and zoom out. Um, lots of other interesting things. This button lets you go to the last zoom extent you are at, which actually is incredibly helpful in, in some cases. So you can toggle forward and back between your most recent zoom extents. Um, this button is a really cool one. It lets you identify features. So let's say you just want to know what this dot is because you don't have it labeled. Click on it. It'll tell you, hey, that is the town of Middlebury and show you some of the, uh, the associated attributes of that feature. Lots of other things, ways to select features. Um, so if you want to multi-select, you can grab this and draw a box around uh, three of our, our points and select them all at once. That's pretty cool. Um, of course, we got our measuring tool over here where you can measure any distances you might want to measure. Change the units as needed. So those are a few of the really cool things you can do. Um, if you want to customize the icons and the tools that are in the top of your project, you can right click in an open space. So notice I didn't right click just anywhere. I, I right clicked here on the open part of the toolbar. And you can, you can turn all this stuff on and off to, to clean up and simplify your toolbar or to add more stuff to it. Um, good, so lots of options for you to explore up here. We will be exploring those throughout the class. Another thing to note about uh, QGIS is um, the table of contents over here. So these are the various layers that we have added to our GIS project. Um, you, and you can interact with any, any of them over here by right-clicking on them and getting lots of options, or simply by just, you can also move them up and down depending what you want on top. So notice when I move the satellite stream above the cities layer, they disappeared. Now I'll move the cities layer back up and notice my, my city dots are now back on top. So you can, you can order what's on top and the bottom over there. Um, we also have this browser window. And this browser window is essentially showing you uh, the various folder connections that we've made. One thing I like to do is connect to my favorite folder. So perhaps I'm going to be working all day on one project that's in one folder. So I can just set that up right here. I'll right click on the favorites, add a directory. Now, for those of you who are in my class, keep in mind, you should have copied the lab folder over. And you want to be connecting into that lab folder on your hard drive, not on the network or any place like that. So here I've got it, lab one. Uh, and what I did was I made an output folder. So for every lab, you should create an output folder where you're going to put um, all your various things. But actually, I guess I'm just going to connect to the lab one intro folder. So here it is. Now, whenever I need to see what's in that folder, I can take a look. The really powerful part of browser is that for complicated shape files that might have six or seven auxiliary files associated with them, it just shows all those auxiliary files as one actual file here, right? So you don't have to sort through that list of dot shx and dot dbf file extensions. Everything is just consolidated into this one file. And if you delete that, it will delete all those subsidiary files. 
And the cool thing here is you can also just uh, add layers straight from here. So here I'm going to actually drag and drop a Landsat image right into my project. Now here it's warning me that uh, this Landsat is not in the correct projection. For now, I'm just going to hit OK and let it reproject on the fly. We'll talk more about that later. So that's another way you can add data, is dragging and dropping it from the browser. Great, so let's quickly save this project and we'll wrap the video. So to save your project, pretty straightforward, go to Project, Save As, and uh, again, I'm going to now be in my output folder that I made. We'll call this Test Example 3. Really important point here. When you save a, a QGIS project file, it's going to have this .qgz extension. So whenever you see that extension, you know it's a QGIS project file. What is a project file? This is essentially a file that acts as a framework or an umbrella and keeps track of all of the data files and data layers that are in the project and how you had them displayed. It's critically important to know that this does not include those actual data files or data layers. Those are still saved separately. All this QGZ file does is keep track of the links to those subsidiary files, um, kind of like a framework or, or an umbrella. Okay, with that said, we'll save it. And you're in business. Welcome to QGIS, and thanks for watching the video.